some of you know my very first YouTube video was a review of my Hermes leather jewelry including the Hermes click clack and Hermes CDC bracelets now that was about three years ago at that point I loved my statement pieces but ever since I cut down on my shopping and unboxing I noticed my personal style has changed quite a lot as well First of all, I now prefer dainty jewelry pieces. Now this is a very interesting change for me because I used to love wearing my Hermes leather bracelets. At the moment, I have a collection of five pieces, including an Hermes Kelly dog bracelet, two Hermes CDC bracelets, a Kelly double toe bracelet, and an Hermes click clack bracelet. Out of the five pieces, my favorites had always been the Hermes CDC bracelets. In fact, I would go as far as saying these were some of my best value luxury pieces because I wore them so much. A few years ago, I even considered selling my Rolex watch, which is the date just 31 because it wasn't getting any attention from me. I always preferred to wear my Hermes pieces instead because they just make such a statement in a very chic way. I'm sure some of you remember I posted a video asking you guys if I should sell the watch and I think 99% of the comments said I shouldn't sell it. I remember someone posted a comment saying, don't sell the watch, it's such a classic piece. Besides, your liking might change in the future and when you're older, you probably won't like those chunky bracelets as much anymore. Well, whoever posted that comment, I must say, your prediction has come true. Now, I still wear my Hermes bracelets now and again, but I'm sure a lot of you have noticed I now tend to go for my Rolex watch instead. But I wouldn't say these Hermes pieces are shopping mistakes because I did enjoy them. It's just that my preferences have now changed. So it has crossed my mind to maybe downsize my collection. But I just have a lot going on at the moment. But I think I'll certainly work on curating my jewelry collection later on this year. While we're talking about jewelry, I now also prefer dainty necklaces. When I first started shopping for fine jewelry pieces, I loved looking at very eye-catching necklaces. At one point, I really wanted the Van Cleef and Arpels long necklace in vintage Alhambra, the one with 20 motifs. I'm not sure what I was thinking because I live a very simple life. I don't have a lot of fancy parties or weddings to go to. So it's not like I would get to wear this beautiful necklace a lot, but I just really wanted it. Anyway, about five years ago, Van Cleef introduced a long necklace in the sweet Alhambra with 16 motifs. Now this is pretty much still a statement piece in my opinion, but it's not as out there compared to the one with vintage Alhambra. This long necklace in the sweet Alhambra was on my wish list for a long time, but when I eventually got to try it on, I didn't feel like it suited me. So the sale associate suggested for me to try on the Van Cleef Magic Alhambra necklace and I fell in love with the one in Mother of Pearl and I bought it. Sadly, in the few years I owned the necklace, I wore it probably less than 10 times. So two years ago, I decided to sell it. In the same year, I also let go of my Hermes Kelly necklace in rose gold. I always felt quite conscious when I wore the Kelly necklace because it had a very sparkly and substantial pendant. I didn't really enjoy the necklace as much as I should because I was always worried about attracting too much unwanted attention. After downsizing my collection, I decided to not buy any more pieces, at least until I figure out what I would actually love wearing. Like I said before, I now prefer necklaces which are quite low-key and simple and something that will kind of go with everything such as this Van Cleef and Arpels Sweet Alhambra necklace in rose gold. I've been wearing this for years. This is like my everyday necklace. At the moment, I don't really have any necklace on my wish list, but if I ever want to add more pieces to my collection, 
I would definitely go for something quite low-key, dainty and simple, such as the Tiffany & Co Diamond by the Yacht necklace. I actually gave this necklace to my sister-in-law for her wedding and it looks amazing on her. Anyway, when I have some time to curate my jewelry collection, I will consider selling my Hermes gumbat necklace in rose gold, but I will keep you guys posted. Another change I've noticed about myself is I now love wearing pearl earrings. You guys have probably seen me in these earrings in a lot of my recent videos. The interesting thing is though, I never used to like pearls. I always thought they look a bit too serious. But now that I'm in my 30s, I find pearls quite easy to style and I just think they look so classy. Now, I don't spend a lot of my time looking for things to buy anymore, but on the few occasions when I do browse for jewelry pieces, I tend to look at pearl pieces a lot. Mizuki, for example, do some lovely pearl pieces. That's a beautiful bracelet that I keep looking at. Recently, I also came across a pair of lovely pearl earrings on Natapote. I think they are from a brand called Wig, and I just love the irregular shapes of the pearls. Then of course, that's the very classic Mikimoto pearl earrings with the tiny diamonds. I'm sure you agree, these earrings will always stand the test of time. Please let me know if you think I should add more pearl pieces to my jewelry collection and if you have any recommendations. I now also prefer low-key pieces. I find that I'm not as attracted to big logo and monogram anymore. I still have monogram pieces in my closet, such as my Louis Vuitton Speedy Bandolier 25 and my Louis Vuitton Mini Palm Spring Backpack, but I am actively trying not to buy more. The one thing I might consider buying is the Louis Vuitton card holder in the classic monogram, which I've mentioned on my video before, but I really don't see myself buying another monogram bag or clothing with a big logo. In fact, I used to love wearing my Bauman t-shirts, but now I feel like they are a bit too loud and a bit too out there for me. So in the last two years, I've not been wearing them all that much. At the moment, I prefer to look more discreet and I also value comfort and practicality a lot more than just a fancy logo. Next, I want to talk about skincare. In the past, I had this mentality that the more expensive a product was, the better it would work for my skin. So I quite frequently purchased really expensive serums and moisturizers. For example, the Lamier Concentrate Serum costs about £160 and I would finish the bottle in about four months. So it all added up to a lot of money. In my 20s, I was also quite worried about aging. So I would put on layers and layers of products on my face. After a while, my skin started breaking out and I had no option but to see the dermatologist. A lot of the products she recommended for me are the very affordable drugstore products. Now, at first, I was very skeptical, but I have to say a lot of these products work very well for my skin. For example, I'm using the Simple Face Wash. This cleanses so well, but it's also really gentle and this only costs £2.20. I'm also using the Blistex Lip Moisturizer and this is like the best lip product I've ever used. Best deal, this is only £2.50. Now, I just want to clarify that as someone who used to have a lot of acne, I am more than happy to splurge on good skincare products, but I now realize the price tag of a product doesn't always reflect its performance. At the moment, my whole skincare routine consists of fairly affordable products. I love brands like Simple, CosRx, Bleed, Misha, and so on. I now also don't wear nail polish or nail varnish. Years ago, I did occasionally paint my toenails, but I've not been doing that in a long, long time. 
I've been contacted by a nail polish company several times for collaborations, but I had to politely turn them down because wearing nail varnish just isn't me. Personally, I prefer my nails to be short and tidy. While I admire people with long, beautiful nails, I really don't think I can manage them, especially with all the housework and cleaning I have to attend to. I am, however, obsessed with putting hand cream on because I just can't stand my hands or my fingernails looking dry or flaky. So those are the changes I've seen in myself after embracing luxury minimalism. It took me a long time to get here, but after decluttering a lot of chaos and distractions, I now know what works best for myself and what aligns with my values. If you've also welcomed minimalism into your life, I would love to know what changes you've seen in the way you dress and consume. We have an amazing community here, so make sure you share your ideas and experience. So that's it from me. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next one. Have a nice day.